and welcome to another Wellbeing Wednesday show. I'm your host, Karen Keener of The Sovereign Mom. And today I have another sovereign fellow that loves DIY as much as I do. And it's Erica Nelson. And she has a company called Willow's Gift. We're going to be talking about that. But she also shares everything that she does with others, which I think is inspiring and empowering. So welcome, Erica. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Um, let me start out by asking you the big question. What is your idea of well-being? So I was able to watch a couple of your first episodes and some of the things that those first two ladies answered could have been exactly what I said. And basically that, you know, it's a journey and I don't think anybody will ever, you know, be in that perfect condition because life changes and things happen and to, you know, ourselves and to our health and things constantly need to be adjusted and addressed. And I know for me personally, there's a lot of things in my life that are really cyclical. And until you kind of recognize these patterns in your own life and you're better able to navigate through the times that were maybe you're, a, a, you know, a little under par with where you want to be and just realize that, okay, well, this isn't going to be forever. What do I need to do, you know, to get through to that next cycle in your life, which, you know, might be extra productivity. And, you know, I think you were talking about in one of the episodes about how just, that need to produce, you know, but sometimes we just need to sit back and enjoy other things in our life because people can't be go, go, go all the time. So it's just kind of, you know, for me, it's getting in tune with my body, what my body wants, what it's telling me, you know, and, and listening to it and adjusting. Yeah, it's it's kind of more of a verb than a noun I'm learning from a lot of people because my interest is I'm in I'm a dabbler. I like to do a little bit of this and a little mm -hmm. bit of that and a lot from my family, but maybe not for everybody else, like mass producing things, um, sharing what I learn along the way. But I'm just the people that inspire me, like yourself and others that I've interviewed on the show, like I'm learning that well-being is not a state. It's more of a of a a noticing or a, a a part of a part of a like whole life picture maybe. And again, it's more of a verb than a noun. And then there's always these like moments where you're course correcting, where you're seeing, mm -hmm. okay, this is not working or this is or this is where I need to pivot and and so I'm learning a lot from you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm learning a lot from everybody too. <laughs> um, so I, my first experience with you on Facebook was I was watching you like doing a lot of DIY projects and are you a homesteader, would you say, or? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So we, um, we have six acres here in Florida and we raise pasture raised chicken turkey goats um you know it had a really good garden going at one point which we need to get back into again but it is just my husband and i and so it, it is a lot of work um but the reason that we started doing this and we both came from you know a city and never really grew up with any kind of home city influence or anything but um what was that one documentary food inc you know yes. the one where it like talked about how disgusting you know factory farms and you know kfos are and just uh, how awful it is and we're animal lovers you know but we are not willing to go vegetarian or vegan because you know we are carnivores or omnivores you know and so we decided that okay well I guess that was the first thing. Okay, what can we do for ourselves so we don't so we can stop putting our money into these industries that don't jive with our principles and stuff, you know? And so, you know, we started just growing our own shit, and it's just kind of been, um, you know, one 
thing after another that either arises from a need and be like, okay, well, I guess I will learn how to do this drywall or fix a fence or, you know, trim some goat hooves. And these are things, you know, some people pay to have veterinarians maybe come in and do these things or somebody else come in and do the drywall. Um, but why not learn to do it yourself? I don't know. Like I will never pass up an opportunity to learn how to do something. Um, and so as far as home studying goes, so yeah, we have been doing that since 2014. Um, and then I don't know where you want to go from there. Cause it's kind of just, <laughs> you know, one thing after another, but, um, if, you just keep building on what you learn maybe and and things just keep coming up as you learn this then you learn this and then it's it's kind of that um is it dunning kruger the more you know the more you realize you don't know and so then you're doing all kinds of things that you never saw yourself doing it's almost like your life just flips over yeah is yeah do you see like a before and after like okay like what got you into watching food inc just I guess well before you know we homesteaded we just had a typical American lifestyle I'd say I would say that my husband and I neither of us were really into politics or political things um and I guess I I'll, I'll mention it here it'll probably come up later in our conversation but um I am a recovering addict and so you know pre a certain time I didn't care about literally almost anything. I did not take care of myself, my health, you know. Um, it was some very, some very dark years and it kind of came to a head in I'd say 2015, 2016, um, where it was just like something needs to change. And I'd say it was maybe a little bit before that, I, I'd say, Food Inc. was a seed that was planted because it, it was that was still maybe back in like 2010 or 2011 or something. And then so it wasn't until 2014 that my husband got the farm. And actually due to my addiction, we were actually split up for a little while at that time. So he went on to kind of pursue his dream. I said it's about 2015 that my life kind of I hit a bottom. And I realized some things need to change. So um, we had gotten back together and I came out here to the farm to live with him. And it was definitely a big change that I needed in my life to, to um, you know, move forward away from what I had known and what was comfortable to everything that was kind of new and scary. And so just being able to be in this place away from, you know, my old life and old people and places that were essentially killing me um, and to be in a place where I can kind of focus on myself in the future and what I need to do for me and my family to be better, just better, you know, and so some influences around that time were definitely Jack Spearco and the Survivalist podcast. Um, definitely listen to him a lot. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Joel Salatin, um, but he's, yep. uh, okay. Oh, yeah, thanks. I love him, but a lot of his books. And then around that time, simultaneously also was when we kind of started on our journey to libertarianism, to anarchy, and then, you know, finally agorism, which, you know, by the time we made it there, we realized that we were already living that lifestyle. You know, we'd been getting into the farming and homesteading, you know, and the more time that I had away from my addiction, um, the more time that I had to fill, you know, with things. And it kind of started out as, you know, some simple hobbies like crocheting, you know, and that was a great one because a lot of times, you know, and even still, even today I still have problems with depression and anxiety sometimes and it's just a good thing you know to kind of keep your mind off of it but feel productive you know you're creating something um and so then it was just like you know a number of the typical farm homestead projects you know building 
nest boxes or coops or roosts or fences or um you There's know just typical something. yes <laughs> and so then when um the scamdemic started you know and in the very beginning actually listening to the survival of pop the survival podcast um Spirko had recommended a book by James Green called The Herbalson or I'm sorry sorry The Herbal Medicine Makers Handbook and I just fell in love like as a kid we had a garden you know and now that we were you know producing again you know it just felt like a natural next step and with all the uncertainty at the beginning going on I feel like all over there was kind of just a push to get back to some natural medicine, you know, and other ways to, you know, initially it was just, oh, I don't want COVID, you know, or what can I do to, or, you know, generally not necessarily us, you know, but (laughs) it was just kind of synced with that time, you know, and um, I I think the, that whole period of time it was kind of like here is a problem um nothing can cure it what this was what was put to it this was how it was put to us as as of yet nothing can cure it you're just gonna have to wait for a vaccine or a medical new product because we're not going to try any of the old stuff on it Um, we we know what we tip typically use we're not going to do that they designed a bunch of protocols that killed a lot of people um (laughs) and i think they're admitting that now um but but there's this sense of like you don't have control over your health for a while like for a lot of people i mean maybe not us but but for a lot of people there was this sense of like we don't nothing's within our power to do anything about this so it's just like you know um out of our hands and so I can see why getting that book at that time is kind of a godsend because it's kind of like here's the power (laughs) yeah (laughs) I you know it sounds kind of like you know woo -woo whatever but I don't know I really do feel like sometimes the universe just provides and so long as we are kind of doing the next right thing and moving forward that things kind of just always tend to fall into place you know it's kind of when you start not trusting yourself you know that maybe sometimes you start sliding backwards that's kind of when you notice that okay what what needs attention you know and why am I heading in the wrong direction and not going forward um but yeah I mean at that time there was just like a lot of distrust you know in quote unquote professionals and systems that a lot of people you know, had and still amazingly do trust. But I know with me personally, even before then, I had my own issues seeing primary care and just having the most awful results or like interactions with them where they don't care, they don't ask questions, you know, simple questions. It's always just like, oh, here, you know, take this pill. And, you know, with my you know, a journey through and out of addiction, like I was definitely thrown, you know, antidepressants and here, take this and just never really felt like it was getting to the cause, you know, or really solving anything or was it actually anxiety and depression or was it caused by other things, you know? And it led me to look at hormones in, you know, hormone imbalances and, you know, and ultimately that also kind of led to the heavy metal detox was kind of more to <laughs> as, <laughs> as, uh, I see if as my for, camera will focus in on it it probably yeah, should it's a yep yeah, there it is <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't even so much I mean the heavy metals were concerned but it was more the symptoms of that the depression and anxiety and brain fog and like I said I was looking for ways to naturally treat some of the underlying causes of these things yeah and and I think that there's the two primary components to health I mean aside from physical activity are 
detoxification and nutrition maybe yeah and and as far as like what we're consuming we're even consuming things that help us eliminate and there's things that help us build um yes exactly and support. yeah support and so a lot of health conditions are are a matter of t- toxic burden it could be like viruses or uh hidden hidden bacteria hidden uh molds hidden all kinds of like metals like you said that's what this is heavy metal detox that you made that so i took this when i had a sore throat and water was hurting my throat like everything was hurting and i put it in my water and it didn't hurt and it soothed my throat and it just like healed it which was crazy i was like yeah cilantro has anti-inflammatory properties you know and that's the thing that i have just loved about this journey into herbalism is that like so many herbs treat so many different things and it's okay to like use it for the one because plants are safe enough you know to take them that way you know they're not just boiled down and separated into the one component to treat the one symptom you know it treats the whole body and um and like I just love when I'm able to help somebody and they're like this really works. You know, I think a lot of people have a preconceived notion of herbal medicine. And I think that stems from maybe they, it maybe it all just started from a poor source. You know, if you go and pick up some St. John's wort off the shelf at Walmart, it's probably not going to do much for you because St. John's wort is one that is best used fresh and even still even dried is okay. But that stuff that's been sitting at Walmart, you know, or you know, poor sources is definitely not good quality. And, you know, as with anything, the better quality, you know, that you start with the better, you know, outcome you'll have in this case, you know, medicine for your body. Um, And actually somebody that um, a face, uh, an internet pocket friend that met in real life, uh, bought one of the heavy metal detox blends. And he actually went and got, oh, and I will say, so so the one that we're talking about, since we kind of jumped into this, um, it is a combination of cilantro and Japanese chlorella. So I'm sure everybody's familiar with cilantro. And then the Japanese chlorella is, you know, an algae um, that has a lot of nutrients also. But the way that they work is to bind to the heavy metals in your system and then helps to break them down and eliminate them through your urine. So, you know, very basically, that's the nature behind it. Um, but he actually got some tests done. Um, I almost want to say, I think he said he did the hair test, but actually had, you know, physical results showing that it, um, that it worked. And, um, I, the old internet, um, says that the combination of cilantro and the chlorella specifically within 45 days, using it three times a day will eliminate 87% of lead, 91% of mercury and 74% of aluminum in your body. And um, I don't know, you mentioned some of those places where we pick those up, but I will add to it, you know, air pollution. Um, If you have old fillings that still have the the mercury in them. Um, I worked in a shop building control panels for the last maybe 15 years and we sanded aluminum. So anybody works in shops doing metal work, breathing in metal dust that gets into your system. Mm -hmm. Some vaccines still use mercury. And then I'd say, yes, and aluminum. I'd say most importantly, things that most Americans put on their body contain things like aluminum, you know, beauty products, deodorants, deodorants, you know, yeah and just Mm -hmm. loaded with that and not even besides heavy metals i mean the carcinogenic properties of the artificial fragrances and stuff that they put in a lot of products i mean that's a whole nother story but just so bad for you yeah and so i was just kind of like i said it's just kind of like okay so a lot of the things that i make it starts out as what do I need, you know, and I test all these things and kind of figure out like how they help me, but you know, everybody's different. And so it kind of starts out as things like that, like with the deodorant, I was like, okay, well, I no longer want to put this commercial garbage on my body 
you know, I tried some of the natural ones and they are expensive, you know, and maybe don't even work as great, you know, and so it's like, okay, <laughs> I'll make my own deodorant. It's like, okay, well, hey, why not learn how to make soap, you know? Yeah. Um, like, I don't know, I kind of lost my train of thought it's, there. But it's a big rabbit there. hole. <laughs> Once you get started making stuff for yourself, it's like, oh man, I got to make everything. And ah. mm-hmm. um, But thankfully, not only do you make it all and you share with people how to make it, but you also sell it. So that's really nice that you do that because I know a lot of people like myself, sometimes I'm overwhelmed and I don't. I don't want to go to the store. Like you said, if you go to the grocery store and it, it was funny, you brought up grocery store, St. John's work specifically, <laughs> and I'm not going to say any name brands or whatever, but I had a friend and this was like, I was just out of massage school. He was just in college and um, he had just been experiencing deep grief and depression. I think actually he was just out of college and he was doing his internship in uh it was a, like a, a physical therapy and he was working with old people and he was just watching them die and it just really affected him and they wanted to start getting him on medications and I think he started on some and I said have you tried St. John's Wort and I got him some from a trusted source um natural it was ages ago okay this is like 30 years ago or something. <laughs> um, and he said he was working so well, like not like immediate improvement. And he ended up getting off his medications. He was really happy awesome. with it. It just, this was his personal experience. I'm not a doctor or anything. It was just something that I gave him as a friend to try. And um, then he went to the grocery store and bought more. And it didn't work. And mm-hmm. he was like, oh my gosh, where did you get that? Because the yeah. stuff that it was at the grocery store was not the same. Or it stopped working. Did it stop working for me? Or was it? And and he knew right away that it was not going to assist him the way that what he needed um, or wanted or the outcome that he was mm-hmm. getting from the other product. So they do make a difference. So when I go look for something... I need to know the people that I'm buying from have the same values about making it themselves and why. Mm-hmm. And um, so that's why I trusted you and was wanting to buy products from you <laughs> because it's easier for Thank me you. to not have to like pull out recipe books and make a disaster in my kitchen. That's already always a disaster taking care of two kids that have homeschool that are home all day and just making oh, yeah. constantly. You can't do it all. <laughs> <laughs> So it's like at some point you're like, okay, I want to do everything, but, um, there's just not enough time in the day to do all the things I want to do. So, um, I did buy your heavy metal detox at first and I love it. I do. And like I said, I used it when I had a sore throat and my kids had sore throats and it healed our sore throats. I think, um, that was our experience is that our sore throats were healed after using it. Um, and so I, that was an unexpected, but wonderful outcome. I was just taking it anyway, um, as a heavy metal detox during the time that I had the sore throat and it was like, oh, this is very soothing. And then I was giving it to my kids too, because it was just like water hurts or throat, everything hurts. I don't want to <laughs> swallow, you know? Um, and so being able to have something on hand that I could give them when they had a sore throat was like that was soothing for me I was like here try this in your water and make it not hurt so much and they yeah. liked it and it worked awesome. um so that's awesome uh um let's talk about some of the things on your website because I'm I've okay. got it open here and I'm looking at it and there are certain things in here that I know what they are but there are certain things I don't know what they are so maybe you could like give me a little like mini sure about what those do hawthorn berry tincture so hawthorn berry is a support for the cardiovascular system it strengthens and tones it so 
I feel like that one actually has been a really popular one because especially with everything going on, I think people could use a little extra, you know, heart support. And um, that <laughs> is made from the red berry. And I, I just remember this and it's interesting because a lot of times nature sometimes will give clues, you know, as to like what it's for and the, yes. the bright red berry. And it, that is the main thing that it is used for is cardiovascular support. Oh, I need that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've been having like those after the, the, especially after the time change, I'm just not sleeping as good and I get little palpitations and stuff from time to time. So that might be well, useful. My, um, my husband uh, has just actually got an artificial heart valve put in a year or two ago. He had um, open heart surgery as a child and this has kind of been a thing. So I, you know, I told you a lot of herbs that I start with are ones that, you know, would benefit me and my family. So that started out as, you know, something for my family. And, uh, you know, as I've been working with it and just realized the awesome benefits, you know, like I said, I put these things out into the world. And that's been one that um, a lot of people have picked up on. So awesome. I know I need ginkgo biloba. So I'm going to have to buy that for you. <laughs> yes, that is good for mental clarity and focus, cognitive support. Um, I believe it, I want to say it's an adaptogen and I am very partial to adaptogen herbs. And mm -hmm. are you familiar with them? Like things yes. like ashwagandha that kind of balance your body, whichever way and ret yes. kind of returns it to homeostasis. And a lot of it has to do with, you know, your clarity and getting better sleep and um so with my struggles through anxiety or whatever a lot of the ones are kind of focused on things like that and ashwagandha was a really big one that yeah. helps me in my journey um yeah. that and the I lion's take, mane I grind it I have ashwagandha root mm -hmm. and I put it in a coffee grinder with a thing of ginger with just powdered ginger and or actually, no, I have a friend that makes candy ginger with maple syrup. Ooh, and so I put the candy yeah. ginger, because otherwise it just flies everywhere. Yeah. So I put the candy ginger in with my ashwagandha and grind it up in my coffee grinder till it is powder, just dust. And I put mm, maybe a, an eighth to a quarter teaspoon in a, in a, hot beverage with mushrooms every day I love ashwagandha it's like so wonderful mm -hmm. <laughs> um milky oat tops okay sorry hold on <laughs> the thing coming up on my screen there we go okay um so milky oat tops is a really nourishing herb same with like oat straw it's um helps to replenish uh like adrenal fatigue um and it's another one for anxiety and sleep and just calm nerves um so i mean like i said you can that's another thing you get with the oatmeal you know the oat straw all the parts are medicinal but the milky oat tops are the um the premature like bud and it actually has like a milky latex in it um so that's that's a really good one Ooh, fascinating. I never knew about that. That's so cool. Yeah, just like, you know, you just think of a nourishing oat bath. I just feel like that's what I picture, like going through my all my brain neurons, you know, just like soothing everything, all the oh brain my nerves. God, I need that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I know chased berry. I've had to kind of lay off the chased berry because it's um it's almost too strong and I'm getting little breakouts and stuff. Um, but chase berry is extremely balancing. I'm in menopause. Yes. And so it was, mm -hmm. there was a period with perimenopause that I really needed it. And now yes. it's to the point where it's telling me and my body's telling me that I can back off on it now and stuff, but it was really helpful during the early parts of my perimenopause journey. Um, that do you want to was... talk about anything else about chase berry? That was a really big one for me too. And one of those ones where like a lot of times with herbs, the way it affects your body may not always be immediate and, you know, in your face, like maybe some other, you know, Western medicines, um, like, you know, with ashwagandha, it could take a few weeks to kind of notice some of the symptoms. Um, but so 
I, Chasberry was one of the ones that I started using for myself um, because I was starting to think that I had some hormone imbalances. And that time of the month, I would get no lo no lies, suicidal. And I would be able to recognize it, that that's what was going on because it was that time, you know, but there'd be a few days where I'd just be like, holding on just be like this this is gonna pass it's gonna pass you know but it's scary you know and so when I kind of started addressing the hormone issue that was one of the first herbs that I was drawn to um and there are a lot of other hormone balancing herbs but I did notice a difference yeah. you know I mean there was still work to be done but I noticed a difference in those times in my life you know that it helped me so that is the the main reason that I use uh, Jasperi. I, I I had some thyroid stuff too several years ago and that's where I learned about it. Is it Chasberry? Am I saying it wrong? <laughs> you know, I don't know. I've never actually heard it spoken before. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm really You're probably it wrong. wrong. <laughs> Milk and that's thistle. Thing. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. Milk thistle is liver supportive, right? Helps deep with yeah. detox as well. Um, yeah. And um, uh, maca root is a, another adaptogenic also with hormones and stuff like that, right? Yeah. And some people use it. Um, some people say that it is uh, increases your libido, probably um, aphrodisiac properties. I've, I've taken it again with, learning about perimenopause and stuff like that it has been very supportive for me in that yeah that was one that I kind of played around with too um one thing that I w would like to start getting into more is kind of working on blends and on my Etsy shop I do have uh, a listing for custom blends because I would get a lot of people asking me you know can you do you have something for this or do you have these you know and I I it was kind of made as a quick thing. So I need to go back and actually list because I have a lot more herbs that aren't actually listed on the site. Um, and, you know, secret, kind of so the secret rest of the secret menu, like, like, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, figuring out what people want to order because, you know, I've been doing this I've had the shop for a couple of years now. And like you said, we don't have time to do everything. So I'm trying to focus on ones that other people will use, you know, especially if I'm not using the herb and so kind of focusing on those things. Um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so I, I, I like the dialogue that people come to me with and cause I'm constantly learning. I actually been working with this guy. He's, on his third one and he said that we nailed this recipe you know on the third one he'd give me feedback you know and I was trying them and it was one for anxiety and I made myself up a bottle you know because <laughs> I might not have thought that specific combinations that he wanted and you know there's so much to learn and I will say that you probably could have had you know, so many other, even more knowledgeable people than I to talk about some of these things. And I'm going to bring it back to, we were talking about how I like to teach other people, you know, to make these own, make, make their own things. Um, because doing all this, one thing that I realized is that a lot of these projects or do it yourself projects are nowhere near as difficult as I have made them out to seem. And it's just kind of like getting over that anxiety hurdle and just doing it so my homie and I started a podcast called the let's make some shit podcast <laughs> where you know we go over these projects and we highlight you know herbs and have guests on that are really super passionate about you know whatever topic it is that we're talking about and um and I've been thinking about it and it came up in a, a different podcast that I was on recently and I guess I would call it a, do it a DIY podcast, but I kind of like to think of it as a motivational podcast because these days anybody can go on the internet and really learn anything, but we are not experts in any of these things. And in fact, you know, we are kind of just learning some of these things as we go, but 
to have somebody who did just learn these projects or people that aren't experts that can kind of tell you where they went wrong, things to avoid, you know, while they're fresh in their mind and just kind of encourage people to maybe try some of these things. And like um, my co-host Resonance makes her own potash from, you know, the, the wood ash. And, you know, it's a kind of a long process. You got to save up that much ash and Maybe you're not going to do that every time you make soap, but be able to say that you did that thing once and know how to in case there was ever a time that you had to. Um, but also, I just get excited about it. And I think it's because of my addiction. I went from doing absolutely nothing and to be doing all these like fun things like for myself, you know, and to make myself more autonomous and breaking it down to even like, you know, I made my own butter. And again, probably won't do that all the time, you know, but to look at something that you made and be like, I made everything on this plate of food, or I built this, you know, I did the, all the electrical and drywall on my she shed, you know, that I've been building out. And it just gives people that sense like of accomplishment, you know, and motivation to kind of keep learning new things and sharing with other people and just living by example you know and putting yourself out there and making yourself available to help people if they ever decide that they want to do any of these projects <laughs> yeah um having a sense of purpose is such a big component to well-being i think you know yes, and and feeling agree. like you can do things yourself is part of it and feeling like you can teach people to do things is part of that um well you learn by teaching I mm -hmm. definitely believe that you know so you, know, you learn something even just sometimes I'll explain it to my husband if he's standing there because it just solidifies that you know in your brain and yeah and um I'll have uh, on this show there's in the show notes you can find the links to your shop with all of the things that you sell plus your podcast so that everyone can find it it's going to be right below this video <laughs> when <Thank it's> you. <laughs> um but i think it's just it is important to learn how to do things for yourself and i think there is a time i i don't think it's just with people that suffered addiction or something really radical but i mean there was a before and after for you you don't know anything till you know it and then mm -hmm. then you like I said it's like you start learning more and more at, as you go and there there is a I mean I can remember a time in my life when I was eat, living off of hot dogs and ramen noodles. yep <laughs> nachos and ice cream here <laughs> just to, to because it was cheap and I had to pay my rent and that was just what I did you know and yeah. Um, to get by and so learning about health and wellness it became an early preoccupation for me but you get it in little pieces you know you start maybe here or there you know mm -hmm. and then it starts to build and grow and and um you know I was I was in massage therapy so I was seeing people that had issues and I wanted to be able to help them and I was working in wellness centers around people that did herbology and acupuncture and um, lots of different types of kinesiology and different types of uh, alternative medicine and mm -hmm. seeing and learning from them and so it was kind of just this like growing ongoing yeah, growing think... I think keeping an open mind about things like this is important because if a lot of people are going in like I said kind of thinking that this isn't going to work for them it's not mm -hmm. you know but I feel like mm -hmm. people are becoming much more open-minded to the idea and you know giving things new things to try and getting results like I said I just it just makes me so happy when somebody's like I can't believe you know I don't have to take this anymore because I have this natural alternative you know you know the the subs I just um, recently did a blog on how this subscription model of the pharmaceutical industry 
for medicine, it, mm-hmm. it, it pays more than having giving someone something that they can take for a little while and not take anymore. If you can get them on a subscription package, package in marketing, that's a great way. So <clears throat> I think after particularly the last three whole years of Mm -hmm. being bombarded with a cure that was supposed to uh, prevent transmission initially. Uh, That was the claims and, and uh, prevent, uh, prevent infection, prevent transmission and all of these things that it did not do, you know, and even prevent death, you know, and, and I just, And clearly, I think enough people have been sick enough times after they took that particular prescription cure or whatever they thought they were getting and not getting that, that it's kind of like, it's kind of like the curtain is, is, is removed and you see the little man running the great and powerful Oz and it's not there. And so people are turning, (laughs) going, okay, what does work? Because obviously yeah. that didn't. It doesn't mean that all pharmaceuticals don't work. I'm not like, oh yeah, broad brush stroke. Oh, it. definitely, <laughs> definitely. Um, there are certain applications. However, I think that it's clear, um, clearer to people how how they could. It all happened at once with this particular prescription. <laughs> It kind of showed like what they're saying is how the sausage is made. Everyone's seeing how they could have been bamboozled about other parts of medicine Yeah. after having lived through the last few years. And um, so people are like, okay, what do people do? And then a lot of people have been coming for years to natural and alternative medicines as a last resort and finding that they worked after they've tried everything else that was offered Mm -hmm. to them from mainstream um you know orthodoxy or whatever it is and and for those people to keep talking about it and talking about it and living around us it's hard to miss that like there is something else here and so I think people are more open-minded to trying other alternatives and seeing what works for them yeah (laughs) Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, what works for me might not work for you, you know, so, um, that too, mm-hmm. there's no yeah. one size fits all. Every body is different. Look at our faces. We all look different. We all, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll wrinkle differently. <laughs> Metabolize different. <clears throat> yeah. So I know elderberries, I want to just sort of run through these a little yeah. quickly. Ashwagandha, yeah. we talked about super balancing or good for moods and stuff like that. Um, mugwort, I've done, I, I didn't ever think of taking it in a tincture. I know of mugwort from you light it on fire and you put it over acupressure points. Oh, okay. Um, Um, it can be used for, uh, to help with, um, menstrual issues in women. Um, the reason that, so I I do use it for that, but the reason I started working with it, I was kind of interested because it's supposed to help with lucid dreaming and some people will put it like in a little like just the herb you know a little thing under their pillow um or you can take it like a tincture but there are there are other medicinal herbs that I guess prevent <laughs> it from like working like that uh so I never actually really noticed a difference but it is um I want to say anti-inflammatory and yeah for women issues Awesome. Elderberry, we know, uh, supports immune system for colds and flus and stuff like that. Um, support supportive oat straw. I have oat straw. I took it when I was pregnant to help. uh, And after when I was nursing to help bring the milk in, it was supportive of that. And yep. And that's again, you know, it's the same plant as the milky oat tops, just a different part of it. So it shares a lot of the same properties. And it's supposed to help tone um, the birth passageway and stuff like that. So that's another reason why a lot of midwives recommend yeah. oat straw. Catnip. I have catnip. I can't remember what it's for. 
So that's a good one um, for, again, it's calming um, and it's safe for kids to, you know, drink like catnip tea. Um, I don't have my notes in front of me to remember what else it's good for, but it's um, the reason that I started working with it was for the anxiety um, properties. Yeah, what you're, that that's resonating with me that it was, and passion flower, the same. It's very soothing, correct? Yeah, that's good for anxiety, insomnia. Um, and the great thing about that one is we have passion flower just like taking over our whole property, like right now. Like, I don't know where the first one came from, but they had just been spreading and the flowers are so pretty and cool looking. Um, so that's, I try to grow as much of the things as I can. Um, being in Florida, though, there's a lot of things that doesn't grow here. And where we are specifically, it get, just gets so fucking hot. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, the, the, um, I've been starting to upscale my ashwagandha production so I can start using that, the passion flower. Um, mugwort I grow so some of those ones are stuff that I actually did grow myself otherwise I do source it from um, very good quality sources organically sustained stuff you know for people who are, care about that <laughs> oh did we say did we mention white did you have white willow did I mention yep. that white willow um, is no you didn't headaches. mention that yeah, right. so that's uh, yeah, that's aspirin mm -hmm. is actually derived from the salicylic acid in the, or the salicin in um, white willow bark. So that's a natural pain reliever, headache um, fever reducer. I've taken it for years. It's mm -hmm. fantastic for me. Yep, dandelion root detox. Dandelion root is great for your digestive system. It gets those digestive enzymes in your gut going to um, help keep everything moving. That is just an all around great herb for so many things. Uh, that's and that that one's we don't really have dandelions growing like they do other places here, but I'm from Wisconsin originally and I just love that one because it reminds me of my childhood, you know, going out and picking all the dandelions and everything. And, you know, now as an adult, like realizing how awesome medicine this was just in my backyard, you know, and so many of these things grow, I'm sure in people's backyards, you know, like burdock root is one, again, it's not something that, that I see here a lot, but a lot of other places, you know, in the country, yeah. you know, cleavers, you know, you got those in your backyard. Um, plantain you know yeah that has a lot of uses and all these things that are considered weeds and you know and the more you learn the more you realize that like almost every plant has a use you know yeah. it and, has a it has a medicine to it yeah even like mm -hmm. even I found out the ragweed that's in our yard that I hate and just what can, can't get rid of it's supposed to be good for allergies you know in the same way that nettle is you know uh dandelion you can make coffee out of it too which dandelion yes. root yeah. yeah my husband loves that stuff I love it. he can almost replace his coffee with it. he goes back <laughs> yeah. and forth fever few i so we grew i couldn't figure it out for the longest time it just it grows like weeds around here in in utah like it just the wind carries it and it and it's beautiful it's so mm -hmm. beautiful and it smells like herbaceous the leaves and stuff so what do you use Feverfew for? So um, I started using Feverfew because I used to get migraines, like I swear, like three to five days a week. Mm. Like, it was bad. And that was one thing. So I ended up going to a, a neurologist and try, put me on one medication. And it was my fault for not reading about it first. But oh my God, it was awful. It, and then when I did read about it, it was like, you can't stop taking it under, you have to wean off of it, or you could have a psychotic episode. And like, with my past, I was like, and like, my primary care knows my history. I was like, why would you prescribe this to me? You know, and but like I said, I should have done my due diligence. Um, And so I gave I went that was my primary care. So then the neurologist put me on something which was helpful. But again, I wanted alternatives, you know, I didn't want to have to be stuck seeing this neurologist for this reason, you know, at, that forever. Um, so it, fever view is actually a prophylaxis. So it helps to prevent migraines. And I 
hardly get migraines anymore. So I have a blend with that, um, some wood betony, turmeric, white willow bark um, that I take every day as a preventative. And do do you know Amanda Rockwitz Rose? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. She she turned me on to wood betony for headaches and stuff. Okay. Um, but yeah, I do. I did remember after you started saying that fever few, like, because it reduces fevers. Yes, it does reduce fevers as well. Yeah. Historically, Uh that's what they used it for. And um, yes, and for headaches, uh, I've used used it for that myself. I just, I'm blanking a little bit today, (laughs) so... I can't remember all this stuff. <laughs> it is. It's a lot. You know, when I first started and I was reading that book, I was just like, I need to get all these plants. I need to plant everything and get seeds, you know? And then it was like, oh my gosh, wait, this is overwhelming. There's, a, like I said, you know, one plant can have like dozens of herbal actions and right. the herbal actions are like the, is it, you know, uh, you know, galactagog which you know produces saliva or you know an amenagog which increases breast milk you know like you're saying or antiseptic anti-inflammatory you know um you know there's so many and it can be overwhelming so I had there's a few times I had to like okay slow down Erica and you know you just kind of pick this information up as you go and you learn you know and I don't think anybody on anything is ever done learning you know because it's just always more to learn. <laughs> so don't get overwhelmed if you decide you want to start learning about plants because it's a lot, but it's worth you, it. You learn a little bit at a time and you just pick it up as you go. I'm surprised how many I actually know of that are on here, you know, like uh, anything about them. But mm-hmm. like I said, I've been dabbling in this for a long time. I'm no expert by any means. And that's why I bring other people on the show. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, what you do. <laughs> Um, but I want to go through these just in case anybody's watching and they're thinking, okay. man, I could maybe use some support with that or whatever um, and consider looking into it and learning more about it um, and checking out your website. Um, you also have Echinacea, which I used for colds. Um, colds. And it's, yeah. Usually Echinacea is the one that I feel like it's not going to support you through the whole cold. It's one of those things where right at the beginning where you're starting yes. to feel like you're coming down with something, it can be really supportive. And, um, and that's one of those things where like medical literature will go, it doesn't cure your cold or whatever. Oh, they, they all say that. At the yeah. end, like, at, oh, after you have a cold for three days, come in and take echinacea for this study. And it's like, well, that's not the time that, the, it, that this particular herb is supportive. Yeah. Um, so it's an early on kind of thing, typically. And echinacea is kind of interesting because that's actually um, the purple cone flower, which maybe more people know it as, but it's, it's pretty. very common it's very one pretty. that people plant in their yards also maybe don't realize that that is, you know, echinacea. Um, but it is also one that I think has been over harvested in the wild, you know, so I guess if you are looking to get some, make sure that, you know, was harvested sustainably yeah butterflies love it so plant it in your garden for the butterflies yep red red raspberry leaf um also good for headaches um that's a good um women's herb um i want to say it helps women um through pregnancy yes Um, that's one that's one of the other ones with oat straw that i took nettle oat straw and red raspberry and alfalfa is something that's commonly given to women yeah. as a tea to drink um, through pregnancy and while nursing to support the you know flow of milk and stuff like that is very supportive. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Licorice root, sore throat, singers, singers, singers love licorice root. <laughs> oh, uh, I. I guess that makes sense, but yeah, licorice um, is. It's also for a... digestion, right? Yes, it is a, what's the word? I'm drawing a blank, uh, like mus- mucilaginous herb. Yes. So it helps uh-huh. to coat and protect um, your digestive tract. And I believe it's good for um, both diarrhea and constipation, which always wow. gets me. But <laughs> um, so yeah, a lot of uh, digestive purposes. I want to say that it's actually an adaptogen also. I don't I... 
think so. I think so, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> Marshmallow root is another one uh, that for throat stuff, but what else? What else? Marshmallow roots for it is marshmallow Same roots as, a gazillion things, right? It is a lot. Um, but it also has it also is a mucilaginous herb, just like the licorice root. Um, so like most marshmallow root is one where if you were to do make a tea with it, you would want to use cold water. Um yes. uh, because the hot water will produce, you know, that 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 um mucilage I guess yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so you can actually see that so they, again it's another coating herb to calm and um calm and coat I guess <laughs> yeah some years back a friend of mine got he was older and got a tonsillectomy and I made him popsicles with marshmallow root slippery elm licorice root all that kind of stuff and mm -hmm. He said that he was, the doctors gave him some kind of cough drop. He said, your popsicles were amazing. Like in one oh. day he noticed a difference and they like make me more and all of that. It's a good so. idea to <laughs> turn those into popsicles. Cause when you do have a sore throat like that, you know, what feels better than a popsicle, Medi <laughs> medical popsicle. I love it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I just made like a little tea with it all and then put it into a popsicle. It worked great. Black cohosh is for women's supportive of women's hormonal stuff. Is that also an adaptogen or no? I don't know okay. um, that one, but yeah, that is uh, like the number one go-to for menopausal issues. Very effective for that. Okay. And kava kava, I, I used to know about kava kava, like when I was a massage therapist, it, it's starting out. So this was mm -hmm. 20, 30 years ago. What is Kava Kava? Remind me. So it is for anxiety. Um, and you'll actually see a, a lot of Kava bars opening up. They're becoming really popular. Um, people, I, I personally don't like care for the taste, but you can mix it with things, but it is the most noticeable, like, euphoria I guess almost kind of feeling but it's like you know like a warm feeling through your body so yes yeah. yeah becoming popular but that's a, a tropical one and it I guess it's pretty difficult to grow because we, we have the right conditions here in Florida to grow it but yeah. I guess you have to wait until like the plant's four years old before you can harvest it for it to wow. develop the um cava Cava tones, um, you know, the medicinal property that produces that effect in it. Um, so it's an interesting one. That's cool. That's really yeah. cool. Um, we couldn't grow it here in Utah for sure. <laughs> That's okay. You probably have a lot of stuff that I can't grow. So <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of pines and that kind of stuff that you're probably not pines and do you guys have a lot of juniper there. No, yeah. I, I think it does grow here, but I don't yeah so we're we're yeah. gonna have more of the pine and the juniper and the wild sagebrush is really popular here it's like do you get um arnica growing where you are i don't know that i have to oh, find okay. out we do get a lot of rose hips just oh, okay. growing wild here yeah uh, i don't know if that's like popular well, there either or whatever arnica is kind of like a mountainous dwelling plant i will there. have to ask around that i don't know but that's a good um pain relieving herb. i use it um, oh yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> i probably have some around here so <laughs> uh ginger root is uh good for digestion it's um, good for nausea car sickness motion yeah. sickness headaches mm -hmm. um it's um so this is kind of interesting and I've still kind of been learning which ones are which, but um, this is an interesting example since we're talking about it, but a lot of herbs and maybe you know this have cooling or drying properties yes. or warming, Warm, moistening cold, process, wet, dry. Know? Yeah. Yeah. And so like, so ginger is a, a warming herb yes. for people with hot dispositions, maybe 
might want to go for a different herb. Um, it's kind of like his little sidebar, like but mint, um, like or yes. something. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but mint can have both cooling and warming properties at the same time. And I don't know, it's just really interesting, and I'm kind of still. I'd love to learn more about that. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that is cool. And and what's also fascinating when you start to learn herbology is where the plants like to grow it also is and how they the soil is and it, it relates a lot to how they are in our bodies and stuff like yes. it's really fascinating yeah. it is. and the way the effects that they have on our bodies similar to like what that the plant likes is what it's good for us and the last one I see here is nettle and nettle again is one of those ones that I said when when I was pregnant, they the midwife was recommending the oat straw, nettle, red raspberry leaf, and um, and uh, was it what was the last one? Alfalfa. Oh yeah, uh, tea to drink. Nettle was one of those to help again with female stuff, um, toning. Toning the birth canal area uh, and uh, it's good for allergies, people that suffer allergies. Yes. Yeah. I've heard that too. Yes. I believe it's an anti-inflammatory. A lot of herbs are anti-inflammatory herbs, which I think there's a lot of people that suffer from inflammation these days, you know, so I think a lot of people could benefit from getting some herbs in their life. And, you know, I make the tinctures because they're easy and you know they'll last a really long time but you know if you prefer to drink tea get those herbs in a tea or you know use extra cilantro in your cooking because eating cilantro is you know you're still getting those properties you know that you are getting in the tincture so you know and rosemary is such an amazing herb oh my gosh it is great for your memory it can be good for your hair um it's good for your circulation and um i mean i mean we eat rosemary all the time you know so the more we can pack these herbs into our daily life and what we eat and by eating better i mean it herbs are great but it's still treating something because there's something off you know and a lot of that does come down to diet you know but it's just so nice to know that there are natural alternatives to support our body when it needs that extra support right and I obviously have a disclaimer in the front of all my videos that none of this is meant as like a yes. prescription. We are not doctors. Yeah. This is not a private consultation for you to treat your particular whatever. We're not doing treatments here. We're not recommending treat. We're just telling you what the possibilities are for you to like start learning and diving in and learning for yourself, really, because people mm-hmm. start to do that. And that's where the empowerment comes from is then when you start to look into this stuff, when you start to study it, and when you start to see the kind of effects it can have on have on you or your family members, you know, using it carefully and um and not just willy-nilly, but with some amount of education and knowledge and um or finding even better a practitioner that knows what they're doing. Um yeah. point you in <laughs> I, the right direction. I, I used to be all like, I'm saving money. I'm doing it all myself. And then I hit a wall a few years ago and I ended up getting a functional medicine doctor and having a bunch of tests run. And there was a lot of things I was taking that were totally right. Like she was amazed that I knew as much as I did about all these different things, but I wasn't taking them in the right dose for where I was at. Yes like and nutritionally that's... or this out of the other and so it really does help to have someone there to like look over your charts that is more familiar sometimes and knows like where you should be and what amounts of whatever you should be taking because it makes yeah. a difference it was like it does so would, were you taking more or less just out of curiosity in, I was in a lot of cases I you know, we're always taught to err on the side of caution. And so yeah. I was taking less in general. So, yes, that's exactly of everything. What I was it's say. funny because people are always afraid, oh, you're gonna do it yourself and you're gonna overdose yourself or whatever. But in in these situations, I was taking um 
um choline like phosphatidylcholine is like a major um it helps people detox that are um for me it was because of uh, certain genetic mutations that that I don't detox properly um yes I actually know somebody here with the probably the same thing where yeah her body her and her son's body doesn't mthfr type yes mutations. Yes. i had like yeah. nine of them on my chart oh, nine wow. different <laughs> methylation mutations and so taking cholines um and the phosphatidylcholine were like the key and i figured it out by myself and started taking them and i thought i was taking like double the dose of this thing um this particular and what i really needed to be taking was of those that particular brand of supplement and the amount that it came in, um, these little gels, I needed to be taking, I was taking, it said take one a day and I was taking two a day. So I thought, okay, well, I'm taking double the amount. So I must be doing something. And as it turned out, what I needed to be taking was eight to 16 per dose, three times a day before every meal. Wow. And so obviously I needed to switch brands because yes. that was not going to be affordable. In the brand yeah. I was using. It was like, it came in way too small a doses for me. That's um, a big difference. So, and it was a good quality one, but um, the one that was recommended by this medical doctor that was specialized in um, functional medicine was, it was just it, again, it was like going to the grocery store and picking up the raw, the thing that's weak and just doesn't yeah. do it. And because maybe it has fillers or whatever else. And, you know, I learned it was, it was, it was educational and it was humbling at the same time to reach out for help and to find out what I, what I did about, it was like, I wanted to be like, look, see, I am taking all the right things, da, 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 da. you know, nothing's working. And it's like, no, yeah, you were taking the right things, but you didn't know exactly what you were doing and you weren't taking enough. And so that's why nothing was working. It's not because nothing's working. It's because you need a lot of this shit. <laughs> yeah. And that's really interesting that you brought that up because it it, it was kind of eye-opening when I learned that too, that a lot of people were used, like you said, used to aerate on the side of caution and taking less where you know, I just read something and it was like with plants, they're generally, you know, with some exceptions, generally safe enough to err on the side of more. And on my tincture bottles, I do put just kind of like a generic based dose. Most of them say one to two droppers up to three times a day. Um, but again, that depends if you're dealing with an acute, um, a, a, something acute or something chronic and not quite as bad because you can't take it more times a day or you know more times a day for a shorter period or if you know I'm pretty small it's like reach, and... just reach out to a person that is a little more knowledgeable about your particular set like a like a professional herbalist mm. or whatever to guide you I usually if people ask I, I usually be like um, listen to your body, you know, start out with this and you are, you can, it's okay to increase it, you know, and just to kind of see how your body reacts. Cause even with other herbs, like St. John's word is another good example, has a lot of interactions with other medications. So it is one that I steer away from because it, I, I don't remember exactly what it was but there was something that didn't jive with me you know and my body told me that and so I just knew to stay away from that but a lot of people and again people who are asking about the custom blends and I will give it you know help them work something out with them but I do always usually tell people that if these aren't herbs that you've taken before it's always a good idea to try the herbs individually first you know, yes. before you start putting it in one, because then you can figure out, okay, this one is effective. This one isn't my, yeah. you know, my body didn't like this one for whatever reason, you know, and I know that it's not always 
possible to maybe individually try every herb but again you know like you're saying that might be when reaching out for help and somebody who does know better and be like okay well these two really do support each other really well you know like the cilantro and the chlorella um i had somebody tell me oh you should be using spirulina which again is you know kind of similar so i'm sure it would work just as well but in my research and my experience i do find that the chlorella and cilantro is effective you know yeah and so and i think it helps uh, I mean, from my experience, when you are taking cilantro that you do need to take it with some kind of binder, because if you just take cilantro by itself, you could get really bad headache. Like that's been my experience is cilantro by itself, even eating a lot of cilantro and I can get, it releases stuff, but it just swims around in there and doesn't go away. And then it right. So, so yeah, you need that thing to help your body to eliminate it. Um, Mm -hmm. Is that what the chlorella does or the, yeah. yeah, Okay. And then I, yeah, cause I've always taken it with like charcoal or something, but yeah, this is great. I love it. And I'll be buying some more, obviously when we were talking about, maybe I'll call you and figure out what, (laughs) what, maybe we can make a blend or something. Okay. Um, but super fun, um, fun website. It's links in the, the, the Willow's gift. The links are in the um, show notes and your podcast as well. It has awesome. been so fun talking to you. You're yes. so knowledgeable. Thank, Thank you, you so much for sharing oh, thanks everything. Thanks for having me. I do. I listened to like I said a couple of your episodes and I was feeling very intimidated before the show because of the quality of the people that you have had on so far. They are very awesome and knowledgeable and inspiring people. And I look forward to the guests you have on in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, well, you know, I, I feel like I just, I know all these bright, shiny stars that, um, that I rely on because I'm kind of like, like I said, I'm a dabbler. And so I don't really know everything. So I'm going to be calling on you to get, you know, mm-hmm. my kinko below my teacher and my, and my I, uh, heavy I metal detox. Just... Cause this is, this is like the best quality heavy metal detox I've used. It's so amazing. Thank you. And, um, I need more of it. <laughs> um, but the point being that, you know, I have all these people and I just like, was like, I have to I have to find a way to bring these people to my audience and bring my yeah. audience to these people because everybody can just benefit from all of this wisdom. The, the anarchist community is amazing <laughs> and I am inspired by everybody all the time and it's I don't know I definitely didn't get the sense of community, you know, pre freedom loving, <laughs> you know. And even just the women, you know, I feel like it's not, this is an uncommon feeling among anarchist women, but it's like, oh, maybe we didn't brought up to not really have women friends or something, but there's just so much support from female friends that I've experienced from people that, you know, live all over the country. And I just, I don't know, it's kind of getting used to, but I love it. And um, well, it's definitely... There is a sense of community among us that the systems that were meant, built or meant or intended to support us. I mean, um, my interview with Brittany Schaefer was on um, Parallel Solutions and she was so... um, you know, it's, it's the system's broken. So we have to like, rather than fix it, what are we going to do? And we're all coming together and we're all sharing our knowledge. And I think that's like part of the magic that, or the glue or the, the binding, the real value is the willingness to share and to help one another learn and, um, and grow their knowledge base. Like you mentioned Jack Spiro, he's amazing. Uh, yeah. I started listening to him through the whole COVID times and stuff like that through that's kind of where I really got interested in listening. My husband had been listening to him before, and he also shares Same. a lot of <laughs> Ken Barry. Is that the guy's name that the, the uh, yeah, I think so. Doctor, nutritionist, whatever that. Uh-huh. 
And so, I mean, there's so such a wealth of people around us tapping into all of these, all of this, to me, foundational for life information that we need that we don't get in school, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm yep. just glad to be able to share people like you with, with the community and the resources that you have. So thank well, you. Thank you again for having me on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us on another wonderful Wellbeing Wednesday. Have an awesome week. Bye.